Hey YouTubers, today we're going to be reviewing the new VoltGo 200 amp hour LiPo 4 battery. This is a 12 volt system. They also make it a 12 volt, a 24 volt, and a 48 volt system. So anyways, if you're wondering, well, what makes this battery any different than any of the other chain of batteries that, you know, you've seen people review on, you know, YouTube and well, that's simple. This uh, battery here has a really rugged case that has a uh, mounting system that they have come up with that is just excellent for you know guys mounting these in their in their vehicles and their boats and their campers and all this but uh one reason why i wanted to do this video is because eventually we would like to be able to do some camping and overlanding and be able to go out for a weekend and not have to worry about having power and so by putting a couple of these batteries in the bed of your vehicle then you can easily have enough power for a weekend if you have some solar panels and so i just wanted to show you how uh, that these batteries mount and how that we would use them in our system and i actually have another one of these batteries i'm going to show you how to link them together and uh, we're going to just go from there and i'm going to tell you a little bit about the battery as we go along so i said the mounting uh, brackets and and the way that this battery mounts is is really perfect for someone you know needing to mount this in the bed of a truck or whatever uh, and if you look here on the front of the battery you can see embedded into the abs plastic you've got these stainless steel inserts and so what these are used for is i'm going to go ahead and turn the battery on its side you can see you've got a, a mounting handle right here it's a carrying handle right now but you can undo it from there and flip it over and put it down here and use it as a way to bolt the battery down well if you don't want it here then you can take it and put it down here and use it to bolt the battery down or if you want to bolt it to the side of a wall or something you can mount it here and bolt it this way here i'll show you what i'm talking about so you just unscrew it and keep in mind this is actual metal right there that's not plastic now the housing itself is abs plastic and it is super strong it's got a lot of curves in it and so by adding a bunch of curves in the battery it made it just even stronger and so these guys definitely definitely knew how to build a case for a battery this thing is the nicest case i've seen on a battery yet so i'm going to go ahead and pull these bolts out right here at the top where that handle is and they're stainless steel hardware so they have really made this thing correct uh, so that way if you leave it outside it's not going to rust on you the, the hardware and then as far as these little carrying handles slash brackets they're made out of uh, some sort of metal i believe it's aluminum I'm, I'm not real sure to be honest with you it has some sort of coating on it and i've not tested it with a magnet but they're really heavy duty and so you can see right there once i unscrewed it then you've got those nut certs and so what you can do with this is take it and you can use it like it was as a handle or if you want to flip it this way you can mount it up against another surface or you can mount it down here and mount it to the floor of whatever you're you're mounting it to or if you want to mount it here on the front you can mount it just like that so this thing is just very intelligent how they've how they've made it and you know you can see right in there in the metal there they even put some little gussets there in the middle to make it stronger so i mean these guys have really really designed a, a really awesome mounting battery so that's what we're going to be focusing on today in today's video for the volt go battery so right here below where I, you got the the handle is this little plate right here now what that plate is used for and i've already got the bolts loose and then it so i can pull it off real easy so it don't take a lot of time but once i go ahead and pull this off what this little plate is used for is to connect two batteries side by side or front to back just whichever way you want to mount them let's say you want to put another battery in front of this battery well what you can do is take and mount this plate on there and then there's another plate on the other end of the battery and then you mount this one and so you mount the the two together uh side by side now if you want to mount them lengthwise you can do that you just take and pull the plate this way mount the other battery coming this way and it mounts them all in one length 
So with all these little nut certs and being empty, you know, because you're not using them all at one time, I got to thinking, I was like, man, wouldn't it be really cool if you could take these nut certs and use them to screw in other stuff? Uh, maybe like a charge controller or maybe a power inverter. Maybe you can mount like a bracket on the front of here that holds your power inverter up next to your, your Volgo battery. So my mind got to turn in. So the other night, and we were in there in the office and we were talking about it and I was like, you know, I bet you this uh, charge controller will fit on the end of this battery. And so we got to talking about it and got to playing around with it and literally within just a few minutes, figured it out, figured out a way to mount it up to it. And uh, I want you guys to be the first ones to see it. All right, so I told you guys that I had two of these batteries and I'm gonna connect them together. And I also told you that I've got a charge controller hooked up so I just got this thing wired up last night and I'm super excited about this and uh, Volco don't copy me and <laughs> I want I want rights to being able to to have figured out how to mount this charge controller to this battery I think it was pretty smooth so anyways if you look here on the front of the battery you got the the black and there's some, like an orange color right in there and then the white lettering and so I wanted a charge controller that number one it matched and number two that you know it didn't need to be a huge charge controller you know if you're mounting this on a vehicle or something like that you probably don't want no more than 30 uh, more than a 30 amp charge controller because you're not going to have uh, a whole lot of solar power on this thing maybe two to six hundred watts or, or so so anyways you know, I didn't need a big charge controller, so I got to looking online, and I found this one here from Alto Solar, and I put it up here to the side where I have these, where the extra uh, nut certs were from the brackets, and I'll show you right here on this battery. You can see that there's a bunch of nut certs right in there, so I thought, well, since I've got all these nut certs there, I can connect whatever the heck I want to in any of these, because I'm not gonna, you know, put anything down here, except maybe the handle when I go to lift it up, but if I'm mounting it in a vehicle, all these are open, you know? So, anyways, I come up with this, and so I put that charge controller there, and it didn't just mount up. No, the, the mounting location was a little bit off, so I knew that I had a little bit of room on each side. So what I did was I took a, uh, a chainsaw file. It's called a rat tail file. And I filed out just a little bit there on the mounting surface on the charge controller on each side where the bolt is. And I'm talking just a little bit. I literally filed for maybe five minutes and this thing fit right up. And I used the, the, uh, some smaller mounting hardware with a smaller head and this thing mounted right up, right up. So I was tickled to death. And so you can see this thing ain't going nowhere. I mean, it is really mounted. What this did for me was allow me to have a battery and a charge controller, and then I've hooked my wiring in here, but all I need now is just a solar panel to be able to pull that, that power in from the sun and you use this charge controller to charge the battery up. And the reason you need that charge controller and you don't just wire straight to the battery is because if you just hook a solar panel right up to the battery, it's going to overcharge the battery and harm it. It can hurt that battery. So you use that charge controller and it charges it up to the desired voltage and then it just shuts off, you know, it, and it turns back on when it drops below that voltage and then it turns back on, on and off, and it keeps it charged all the time. So that's why you want a charge control. So when I went to uh, wire this thing up, you notice there's not a whole lot of room right there between the bottom of the controller to the bottom of the battery. So I got to thinking, man, I hope I can be able to get those wires, those uh, solar panel wires to turn out and not be too far down and get all bent up and stuff. So. I tried it with just regular um, solar panel wire and everybody knows this stuff's really stiff and it's kind of, you know, too stiff to make a, a real sharp bend. So I thought, well, why couldn't I just take some of that new concepts wire, the eight gauge, and it's a uh, oxygen free copper, but it's very flexible. I mean, look at that. This stuff here is rated for 60 amps and it's a, it's an eight gauge wire and you see how flexible it is. And so anyways, I thought instead of using just your typical solar wire that I would just 
uh, use that new concepts wire. And so I was able to come down right out of it and make that bend, no problem. You see how flexible that wire is. And then for the battery side, I use the same new concepts, eight gauge wire. And again, this stuff's rated at 60 amps and it worked out beautiful. I mean, you can see that I come up the backside and I just took a, a wiring clamp right here, a little plastic one and hooked it right in to where I screwed in the charge controller. And that keeps those wires all nice and tight. And then I come up here and I ran the negative wire across the back and looped it around to the front. And I used, uh, like I said, I used the new concepts wire, eight gauge. And then for the terminals, I used the cell term brand terminals off of uh, Amazon. I really love those. I think they work great. I'll put a link for them down below along with the new concepts wire. And then I put some heat shrink on there. And, and in the front here, I just put a little wire clamp right here in the front holding the MC4 connectors. So it just worked out perfect. So if you're out there and you want the same system and you want to do the same thing that I did, I'll put a link for the Alto, Alto Solar Charge Controller 30 Amp MPPT and I'll link all the wire and stuff. So if you're wondering, how do you connect these two batteries together? So I told you before, you can take this plate right here and you mount it here in the front like that. And then you just slide this right up next to it. And then you line your, line your bolts up there on the inside. And you might have to shift them around till it gets lined up, but it took just a second. And then you just screw them together. It's that simple. And Man, once you get these things screwed together like that, and I mean, it's super strong. And you can look at the front one here, but there's one that's just like it there in the back. Same bracket and everything. Let me get this one screwed in. Now, you can't tell me that don't look sharp. So now you've got them joined in the middle. You've got them a mounting surface on both batteries mounting it down and then on the back side you can do the same exact thing and so you can mount a plate here in the middle to keep them joined together and then you've got you know mounting here in the middle and then a mount here in the middle so i mean it's it's just endless possibilities with these volt go batteries i love the case of them i just think they're an amazing battery so in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to hook the batteries and charge controller up to this solar panel here. And so this is a 180 watt solar panel that I got on Amazon. And you can see it's very easy to hook up. It's got your MC4 connectors and they're labeled. There's negative, that side's positive. And then all I have here is just a, a little extension cable for, it's just a couple solar wires to connect to your MC4s here that connects to the solar panel so we're going to hook it up real quick and we're going to go ahead and start with the uh, positive this is off the solar panel here you just push them together they lock in place and i just made these on a whim i mean literally it just took me five minutes to make these cables if you've never used these mc4 connectors before literally you can put the connector on the end of the wire in literally like a couple minutes very easy but uh Anyways, uh, first things first, we're going to go ahead and plug this in. And you can see red to red, positive, positive. And then next, we're going to go ahead and connect the, the negative. It's the same thing. And these only plug in one way. It's, they're dummy proof. You can't hook them in the wrong connector. They only go one way. And so now I've got both of them hooked up to this 100, or I've got one battery hooked up to this 180 watt solar panel. Now I'm gonna come on the other side here and show you that when I get it hooked up that the charge controller turned on. And you can see right there that it's set to uh, 12 volt lithium. Now this charge controller can do uh, an absorbed glass matte battery, a lithium. 
uh, 12 volt and 24 volt so that's pretty neat and let's see here uh, let me play around with it there there we go you've got your your backlight turns on there's your information all right guys so once you hook up your solar panel to the uh, mc4 connectors here going to the charge controller then that's really all that you need uh, to hook up now to be able to monitor this thing you can monitor a couple different ways you have a display right here that tells you your battery uh, power and it tells you 25 percent 50 percent 75 and 100 and then there's an alarm and then there's a run light just letting you know that it's okay now if there's if you over power something and it shuts the battery down then the alarm light will sound but uh you know uh, you can usually see it lit up a little bit better but it's uh it's kind of bright out here right now it's probably it looks like it might be picking up on the camera though but uh anyways that's one way and then the other way that you can monitor the the power coming in from the solar panel is through their app and right now my phone's acting kind of stupid but you go to the uh, volt go power app and like i said my phone's acting up right now i can't get it to connect i had it connected the other day and i've been playing with it ever since and then voila today my phone's acting up and i just can't get it to connect but it usually shows you your standby power and all your voltages and all that and it's an awesome app i mean it really is when it's when my phone's working right but uh anyways uh it can tell you all your your power going in and your and uh you know it's it's just pretty neat to be able to monitor it with a with an app and uh, also you're going to get some readings off your charge controller as well but that's really all that you need to make power now depending on what type of power you're going to use whether it be dc power or ac power um depends on the next step so if you want to just use a uh, dc power then obviously you could take and and run a, a a wire to each terminal there and have like a maybe a cigarette lighter connector there in the middle and just basically run some um, basic DC uh, powered uh, devices off that cigarette lighter connector let's say a fan or some USB lights or some, you know a phone charger things like that and you could run multiple uh, of those on here so the way that you would use the uh, the battery to power DC devices is very very simple you get uh, like a cigarette lighter like this go into two terminals and you just hook hook it to your battery and if you're wondering well what kind of things could you run off of this well you can run you know a phone charger you can run USB lights uh, you can run a fan you can run quite a bit of stuff and you don't just have to have one of these obviously if you want want to run multiple of these you can I mean you can stack them up you know do most people do that no but is this the most efficient way to do it yes and the reason being is because number one you don't have to have no power inverter turned on so that power inverter is draining power from your system plus it's using more wattage than uh, just straight DC because it's having to convert it from DC to AC so by using you know the cigarette lighter plug you're just hooking right to the battery and you're getting straight DC power now uh, if you want to hook up to a power inverter that's fine they do make a power inverter that has a passive uh, DC connection through it and what I mean by that is the power inverter uh, whether it's turned on or off it allows DC power to go through it and it allows you to um, be able to power up your phones and um, it gives you a bunch of outputs where you can plug a lot of stuff into it and I'll show you I've got one right here so like I was saying uh, you can take an inverter uh, this certain one has a DC pass through and you can connect it to this battery here and uh, I'll show you what all it's, it's capable of doing let me first connect it what you want to do is keep your battery turned on it has an on and off switch right there so you make sure that's powered on then touch it with the resistor for about five to ten seconds and when you do you can see the light on the inverter turn on and the reason you do this is so you don't end up with a spark and so you don't mess with the internal capacitors of the inverter and then you just take and touch it to the battery post and go ahead and connect it if you're interested in these little resistors they're like 10 bucks i'll put them in the link in my description down below and you get like five of them for ten dollars they're just a 30 ohm 
resistor. But anyways, once you get this hooked up here, you can see that it tells you right there, there is your battery voltage. It's at 13.5. You know, I'm sure the, it's gonna look funky and flashing on the camera. But uh, like I said, you've got all these connections here on top. You've got two US, two USB A and then a quick charge USB and then there's a USB C. Well, what can you do with that? Well, I have these lights right here on top. These are USB lights. You can connect those in and you can see right there that uses five watts of power and that's DC. Then I've got another one. You can plug it in. There's another five watts of power. Then you can plug in another light and total you're using 15 watts of power. That's nothing. That's very, very efficient. And so if you want to, let's say, run a small little fan, then you have this little port here on the side and you can plug in a little 12 volt fan. So on this uh, inverter, you've got a, a 12 volt plug there on the, or outlet there on the end. So I've got this little 12 volt fan plugged in and you can run it. This thing here is rated at 10 watts. It only uses between five to seven, but it's rated at 10 watts. And so you know, you've got a fan, you've got three USB lights, and that's just on DC. So at the most, you're using 25 watts. So that's very, very efficient. This thing will run a 25 watts a long, long time, many, many, many hours. Now, if you turn uh, all the DC stuff off and switch to AC, you know, let's say you plug in, let's say a box fan or something like that, then, you know, a box fan is going to use like um, 75, 80 watts on high. And then plus, not only is it going to use 75, 80 watts on high, but the inverter is going to be using wattage as well. So I would say this inverter probably uses probably roughly under 10 watts, but, you know, you go from 75, 80 watts to another 10 watts to that, you know, those wattage starts creeping up and the amount of time that you can run your devices starts lowering. So, um, you know, try to keep everything running on DC power and it'll last a lot longer. Now I understand some things you can't get to run on DC power. You need the power inverter. And so that's why I recommend this little small one here. This one here is from a company called Max Park. Uh, it's it's on the Amazon store called Twing. I've got a link in the description down below. I've tested this thing. It's pure sine wave. It, it runs great. And uh, it's just a very simple inverter. It's really small. And it has all these uh, outputs right there on top. Like I said, you've got a PD and three USBs. And then you've got your three AC plugs there on top. And then your 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter port on the side. So it has a lot to offer. Plus it comes with these... Uh, alligator clamps now would I recommend using this thing to a thousand watts or you know even seven or eight hundred watts with these alligator clamps no I would definitely upgrade the cables with that inverter um, because I've tested it and when they get hot this right here gets way on up there in temperature so I would recommend going with something a lot thicker just a heavier gauge wire like this here um, you know, this is just some ones that I had left over from another power inverter that I reviewed. But truthfully, uh, if I was going to upgrade the wiring in it, I would probably go to this new concepts wire over here. I recommend it to, you know, everybody. I use it on all my builds. This stuff is the best wiring you can get. It, it's not going to get hot on you as long as you size it adequately. But uh, anyways... That's enough uh, on the inverter and what you can run on there. I think you guys get the picture. But uh, back to the batteries. I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about them. And these batteries here uh, are, are really neat. And, then, and I don't have them hooked together, but you can. You can hook them together in parallel. Now, you cannot hook them together in series. And now, uh, what I mean by that is when you hook them together in parallel, it increases the amount of capacity that you have. So you go from 200 amp hours and you hook this one together to it and that'll make it 400 amp hours. So it's still at 12 volts. You're not messing with the voltage and changing that around, but you're just increasing the capacity. And that's, that's the way that you can add these 
add more batteries to this system. So these batteries here are I-65 rated and what that means is you can leave these in the back of your vehicle and it can rain on them but you know you don't want to drive this thing in a lake and submerge them because you know they will leak you know if you try to submerge them but you know I would say you would probably be good for just a few minutes or something like that but I would I wouldn't chance it just because you know that's it's a pretty big investment to risk but uh you know if they do get rained on or if water sprays on them or something like that you'll be fine now as far as the charge controller and the power inverter probably not so much but the batteries you'll be you'll be fine now if they do stay out in the weather the hardware that connects the batteries is stainless steel so it's not going to rust on you so that is a plus and let's say you know you have a problem you know with the bms or something that goes out on the inside of the unit you can uh, take the top off of this and that, that's what's really neat about this battery is you can see right there it's got a perimeter of uh, bolts that goes all the way around and there's a gasket in there that seals the top on this battery and so you could pull the top off this very easily and so that is really neat now like I said it does have an on and off switch there in the middle so that right there is basically a battery disconnect in itself so I, I find that switch to be very, very handy. And you know, if something went wrong or you needed to hook something up, you can just turn the battery off. You know, as far as, you know, the, the mounting system on this thing, it's just absolutely the best uh, mounting system of any battery I've ever seen. I'm really excited about putting this thing in the back of the Jeep one day and, uh, you know, going off and doing a, a long uh, camping trip. So let's just say, you have these batteries in the back of your vehicle and you've got solar panels up on the roof of your vehicle and let's say it gets cold at night let's say it dropped down below freezing well if these batteries are, are needing to be charged and it drops below freezing and your solar panel starts charging a battery on a normal battery if it's if it doesn't have a heating pad on the inside of it to keep it above that freezing temperature and you try to charge a battery that's um, freezing like that you can damage the battery so this particular these batteries here have like a heating pad built in so it warms the battery up when it starts to charge so you know it senses that you know once it, it drops below that freezing temperatures and you try to charge it then it starts heating the battery up so it doesn't damage the battery long term so it kind of protects your investment so you know uh, you know like on a lead acid battery it doesn't matter so much if it's if it's below freezing it's not going to really bother it that much but on lithium it really does affect it and so you definitely want a battery that does have that heating uh, heating element on the inside to keep it above that freezing temperature it's just pretty much a, a, a fail safe so you don't ruin your battery so that is one major thing that I, I do like about this battery and then also uh, for the nerds out there that and this goes way over my head I, I don't know much about this so I'm not going to speak on much of it and try to act like I know what it what it, it, it is and what all it does but you've got right here you've got these little screw in caps and you can see that they're just plastic caps and they've got like a I believe a silicone uh, internal there that mates up to the flat part of that uh, area and what this is, is it's a COM port. You can see right there, it's a communication port. One, and then over here, you got another one. Communication port two. And I guess you can plug in there, if you know what the heck you're doing, and make changes to the settings. Not real sure. I'm not, not too big into being that much of a nerd to know what that is. But, you know, if, if you are and you like playing with those settings and you're a lot smarter than I am, then that's a pretty cool feature to, to have you know if that's something that you get into is that feature for me no probably never never going to use that most likely unless they come up with something that plugs into it that makes it cool but uh anyways i'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up i just wanted to tell you guys about the volgo batteries and show you some of the products here and tell you about what all it can do and show you some of the features but uh you know as far as the battery goes I got to say, I'm very impressed. They These guys knocked this one out of the park, and uh, it's, it's just an awesome battery, and you'll see me doing it 
uh, using this battery and some of the testing and stuff from here on out and uh, I'll, I'll make sure that I use it and test it and if I have any problems out of it, I'll definitely let you guys know just look down in the description or down in the comments and you know if I have any problems I'll, I'll let you know and I'll probably even make a video on it but so far so good I've not had any problems I was using this uh, in the last one of the last uh, power inverter tests and didn't have any problems we run it up to like a hundred I'm sorry we we ran it up to almost like 1800 watts because the uh, discharge current on this max discharge current is 150 amps so we ran it all the way up to 150 amps and, and we watched the battery uh, do what it was supposed to do and it shut down and to keep from harming the internal components so when it did shut down though the alarm uh, light went on and let us know that it shut down and you can see right there there's an alarm LED light that lights up but uh it didn't harm the battery at all it did, like I said it did exactly what it was supposed to do and so we was both very very impressed with this battery so anyways like I said I'm gonna wrap this up I appreciate you guys watching I could talk all day about this battery I gotta wind myself down so I don't preach any longer but uh anyways thanks for watching please like and subscribe and until next time see ya